Hey guys, it's great to see you all this morning. Hope you're all doing well. And as you can tell, it's not John and Helen this morning. So you're in a different house with a different group of people. Uh, I'm Patrick. I'm Alex. And this is Erin. Harriet is asleep at the moment. We thought it's best to try and do this while we've not got both of them running around and create the mayhem we normally have day to day. Yeah, it does get a bit tricky trying to do all this recording online when we've got two little ones running around. But as I said, it's great to see you for our celebration this morning. I hope you're all well and I hope you all get involved with this. Remember that as we're going along today, please put comments down. It's great seeing people interacting. It's great saying hello to people this morning. And after the service, of course, we've got our Zoom meeting that you can all join in. So again, if you're going to join in that and you've not already got the email, make sure you leave us a comment and we'll send you the details across before the end of the service so you can join us for a chit chat at the end. Yeah, and if it seems though you're already online, it might be worth checking out our YouTube channel while you're on here. And there's going to be some great content being uploaded today, um, not least of which will be Shailene's two-minute testimony. Um, there's a couple of testimonies already on there, and it's just fab to find out a bit more about the people who do church, find out a bit more about all of us, so that when we do come back together, when we're all live again, then you'll know some of us maybe a little bit better than you already do. <laughs> There's also some great stuff for the Alive group and for the Power Pack and for Sharper as well. So if, if um, you've got kids that fit into any of those categories, um, then it's worth checking those out. Now it's been good recently, lots more stuff starting to open, things like that, and it's really exciting being able to get out and do some of those things that we've wanted to do for a while. Uh, just simple things for us like going to Ikea, like we always go to Ikea, we love going and having a wander around looking at some furniture and we are actually due some so we're not just going for a random date that we used to go for, just that's how exciting we can be sometimes. Uh, and lots of other shops opening as well. Yeah, the girls need some new shoes so um, we're waiting for Clark's to open. I don't think we'll go this week though, I think we might leave it a couple of weeks just to let the crowds die, die down a bit. Definitely. I, I love queuing as much as the other any other person, but I think queuing to measure Erin's feet could be a bit of a hard one to queue up for. But as well as that, it's been so busy. I've been doing so much recording again this week. I know lots of students have been back at school. Maybe you've been back in school this week. And it might be a bit different to normal. I know still for me, I'm recording myself teaching lessons as well, which is really strange as well. And a lot of teachers are quite self-conscious about it, but we've been braving that and sending them out to students. I've uh, been recording more music videos as well, which I really enjoy doing. And now we get to uh, record this as well, and Alex has been uh, getting the sermon ready and prepared for today as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, well, we've been doing some a uh, little bit of crafty projects, because the girls still aren't at nursery. So we've been uh, making um, different things, like Patrick's made a, a mud kitchen for the girls, out of some old pallets that he's um, asked to take off some builders around the corner. I know, very brave me, I don't like normally talking <laughs> to people I don't know, so... And I've been making a tent out of sticks for the girls as well. I'm just trying to make the most out of getting outside while, while the weather's nice. Hopefully it'll brighten up again this week um, or we'll, we'll be able to get in the garden again. Because it makes all the difference, doesn't it? No, it's been good discovering different skills we've got and different things we're able to do and trying things that are new. Maybe that's been the same for you guys as well. You've been able to discover some things that maybe you weren't sure you could do before. Just maybe new things you've actually tried doing. But as I said, it's great to see you all here this morning. We're going to sing together and we're going to worship together. We're going to hear God's word together. Uh, so as we come to worship now, then let's pray together as we get started and we'll sing together. Super. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this chance that we have to meet together even as we do it in our own homes. Thank you, Lord, that you are here with each one of us. And Lord, we pray now that as we worship you, you will be with us, you will inspire us. Father, you will speak to our hearts and our minds and show us what it is that you have in store for us. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Amen. Love over 
comes, He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive, break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom. Awaken to life, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have to raise these. We declare, He's been faithful. You've been faithful through every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore. I know you will do it again For your promises, yes and amen You will do great things God, you do great things Oh, hero, oh, hero of heaven You conquered the grave You free every captain Break every chain, oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Oh, hero, oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free and recapped and break every chain. Oh, God. Done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken to life. Oh Jesus, I save your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. You have done great things. Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things.
every life is sold out Running with a vision Seeing heaven breaking People are the prisons When we don't know what to do And what to do Our eyes will be The celebration had been going on for six months when King Xerxes, who had had a bit too much to drink, sent seven of his eunuchs to bring the queen to him, so he could show off how beautiful his queen was. Queen Vashti, who was holding her own celebrations, didn't want to leave a party to show off for the king, so the seven returned alone. Upon hearing this, uh, the king wasn't too happy. The queen had disobeyed his command. King Xerxes was furious, and he asked his advisers what the law said could be done to punish the queen. His advisers were worried because if a woman was to disobey the king, then surely all women would become rebellious and no one would ever listen to their husbands again. She must be made into an example and banished from the land and a law must go out declaring every man was to be master of his own household. When King Xerxes had sobered up, he realised actually he quite liked having a wife around after all, but it was too late. A king's law could not be overturned. He was just going to have to have a massive year-long beauty contest and marry the winner. It was to this man, King Xerxes, that Esther, a young Jewish orphan, eventually married. She was raised by a cousin, Mordecai, who took up a royal official position and who overheard a plot to kill the king. Telling Esther, she rushed to tell the king who quickly dealt with the traitors. But he forgot to reward Mordecai for his help. Sometime later, a man 
named Haman became the king's right-hand man. And he was so powerful. The king liked Haman so much that he ordered that everyone should bow to Haman too. But Mordecai, for some reason, did not bow to Haman, which just wasn't on. This guy was practically in charge next to the king and he wanted respect. So when Haman found out that Mordecai was a Jew, he felt that it wouldn't be good enough for him just to get revenge on Mordecai, but instead he would kill everyone and the Jewish people. So he went to the king and he started to inform him that there were a certain type of people who had their own laws and were a threat to king. He offered a thousand talents of silver to the king's treasury. And remember, this is a king who just threw a party for half a year, then held a year-long beauty contest. It's possible that funds were getting a bit tight. So the king agreed, not realising that these troublesome people included his own queen, Esther. When Mordecai learned what had happened, he was troubled greatly. And he put on sackcloth and ashes and he went into the king's court and made sure Esther was aware of what was going on. This is where we're going to pick up our Bible reading from Esther, chapter 4, starting at verse 10. Then Esther spoke to Hatha. And commanded him to go to Mordecai and said, All the king's servants and people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law, to be put to death, except the one whom the king holds out the golden scepter, so that he may live. But as for me, I have not been called to come to the king these thirty days. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise from the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf, and do not eat or drink for three days. Night or day, I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. It's been a funny few weeks, hasn't it? But with everything that's been going on. It's been a strange time, but in some ways it's managed to unite us more than we've ever been united before. Just like on the Thursday nights when we stand outside our doors and clap with our neighbours. I mean, how weird is that? We'd never have done that before. Especially coming out and just, if you're the first one, just clapping into the silence. It's a bit awkward. It's a bit strange. Right? share a little grin with the neighbours and maybe wave hello. Something we've not done before. And it's strange, but we're doing it together, so it's also special. It's special because it's something we wouldn't have done before. It unites us while we're all hiding away. And not only that, but people have been volunteering more, people have been looking out for their elderly neighbours, people who are shielding. There's lots of ways where we're doing new things. We've learnt a new vocabulary. Now we're talking about lockdown and shielding and social distancing. And a year ago, we wouldn't have known what any of that means. There's something special about learning something new together. Something special about discovering something new, even when it's a whole new way of life. It can bring people together, that discovery. And that's the good side of it all. But there is another side to all this. Another side that creeps in, but people still don't talk about. I first experienced this when I was probably around nine or ten years old. And I had a few friends around at my house. And I'd just gone downstairs for... I don't know, um, a snack or some drinks or because mum or dad wanted me to. 
Then as I came back up the stairs, I could hear laughing in my bedroom and that's good, that's what you want when a friend comes over. But as I got closer to that door and I stood outside, I could hear that what they were laughing at was me. They were saying some not very nice things about me. And as I stood there, just a little girl, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to feel about it. I didn't know whether to go in or to stay outside, to tell mum or dad. So I just hid. I remember hiding in my mum and dad's room and just behind the bed, just wishing that I knew what to do. Wishing that I could just hide away there where it's safe. And it was probably all over something nothing. I imagine being nine or ten year old girl we were probably best friends the next day. But for the first time I really felt lonely. Loneliness. And like I said it may not have lasted a long time back then. But some of us have been feeling that over the past few weeks. Maybe in a little way, maybe in a big way. Loneliness. Because there's a sense, isn't there, how in some things we're all in this together. But then again, in some things, we're fighting our own battles more than ever before. We're facing our own thoughts and our own feelings. And it's a lot harder to get away from them. Because we're dealing with it on our own. And we see as well the way that we think life should be compared to how life is being played out on our screens, on social media, in the news. And we know there's something not right. We know that we want things to be different. It's one of the things that I've seen shared quite a lot Actually, over the past few weeks, I've seen quite a few people share the quote, we are in the same storm, but we're not necessarily in the same boat. Loneliness. Being lonely can come at any time in life. So many reasons why we might feel lonely, but I find that when I do feel lonely, I often have the same thought, the thought that no one can understand what it is to be me going through this situation. No one gets me, no one understands. And I wonder if Esther maybe felt that way. Maybe when Mordecai was telling her not to share that she was Jewish when she went into the harem. Or when she got married and she couldn't share that she was Jewish with her husband, the king. I wonder if she felt lonely. Because I'm sure she was surrounded by people. I'm sure she had handmaids and servants and attendants and all the people that surrounded queens back then. But there's something about being unseen, about not being understood, that can really make us feel alone. When we have to pretend to be someone that we're not. When we have to put on a front, it's hard to even know who we are, let alone show that to anyone else. But yet, how many of us will still put on a front to stop people from getting to know us? When the order came down from King Xerxes through Haman to, that all the Jews must be killed and that all their property taken, that gave Esther some protection that no one knew who she was, no one know that, knew that she was a Jew. She was protected, she was in the castle. She might escape the genocide. But she couldn't be protected from the loneliness. I mean, she had the greatest excuse ever, didn't she? She, she couldn't go and see the king, she might get killed anyway. She had her excuses and it was a great excuse. But that excuse couldn't protect her either. That excuse couldn't protect her from the grief and the loneliness that she would have felt when all the people that 
really knew her, that knew that she was a Jew, that knew who Esther was, if they were to be killed. She might live, but she would live knowing that she had ignored a calling from her God. As Mordecai said, who knows whether or not you have come to your kingdom for such a time as this. Your calling has come. You can't hide anymore. I was on a recent Zoom call with um, one of my friends. We've all been doing Zoom calls, haven't we? And um, I was on this Zoom call with a friend and I was telling her all about how recently I um, have volunteered to take a lead on some of the children's work at church and to help out there. And do you know what she did? She just laughed. She laughed and she said, you know, I remember you saying to me that I don't do kids work. And she was right. I bet I've got loads of friends who could say the same, who, who have heard me said those words, that I don't do kids work. They were right, I didn't. And I might still not have done, except for God was prodding me to. So I had to do it. And maybe if I hadn't have done it, God would have asked someone else to do it. Because he equips people for the jobs that need to be done. Maybe you would have gotten someone else, but then I would have had to stand up there in God's throne room and explain why I ignored a call from God. And I, I didn't fancy much doing that. I guess what I'm trying to say is this. No matter how lonely you are, no matter how unseen you might feel, there is a God that knows you. He knows exactly who you are. It says in Psalm 139, You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down. And you are acquainted with all my ways. Before a word is even on my tongue, O Lord, you know it all together. You are known, and you are loved. Being lonely is easy. Now obviously it's not easy to go through. Obviously it's not easy to live with, but it is easy to be lonely. We manage to do it in a world where we could literally speak to anyone at any time, wherever we are, we still manage to get lonely. Because we can be whoever we want to be at any time. We don't have to be ourselves. We don't have to make a connection. What is much harder to do than before is to be your authentic, God-given self. Maybe that means that we need to stop and we need to start following our call the things that God's prodding us to do, or the people that God is prodding us to be. How can we step out into that? How can we explore that calling further? Esther had to be herself in order to fulfill her purpose. She couldn't have saved her people if she was still hiding who she was. She had to be herself in front of Haman, who hated her people who hated her family, who hated her cousin Mordecai, and who didn't realise it but would probably hate her too. She had to be herself in front of a king who had banished his last wife simply because she wouldn't turn up to a party when he told her to. She had good excuses to not be who she was, but she had to do it. We can't be afraid to stand out as who we are. God made us. Paul calls us his God's workmanship, made in Christ Jesus. That's God's workmanship, made in Christ Jesus. And his workmanship is just too good and too wonderfully made to be hidden away. Are you big enough to hide away God's creation? That's you. 
Who is it that God is calling you to be? Where is it that God is calling you to go? Very often, although the details may change, I have found that the answer to that is simply to just be someone who trusts God a little bit more. So don't be afraid to stand out for God. Take those things that make you unique. Take those gifts, take those skills, take those hurts and those pains and those things that God has given you. Take those things that God has put you through. They're the kingdom that God has given you for this time. Those are the things that we can draw on as we go through challenges, as we journey through the life that we lead. Those are our kingdoms for such a time as this. It takes bravery like Esther to use all of ourselves for God. But do you know what? It also takes other people. Both Mordecai and Esther knew that they needed other people in order to fulfil their purpose. Mordecai knew that it'd have to be Esther going in to see the king, even though he was a man, even though he'd saved the king's life before. It had to be Esther who went to see the king. And Esther knew that when she did that, when she went into that throne room, she would need the backing of her people. She needed her people to fast for her. She needed to know that she was supported. We need other people. As much as sometimes we would just love to grab a book and go find a log, log cabin in the woods or something and you know sit by a fire and just be on our own and, and shut the world out. I mean, maybe that's just me. As much as sometimes we don't want other people, we need them. We need other people to help us to fulfil our purpose. So when I hid in that room when I was just a small child. They took my brother to come and sit with me and to just listen and to make me laugh and to support me to get up and carry on. It took my brother to come alongside me to help me move on. And when I was exploring whether or not I should be doing the children's work, it takes the people around us at church and and my family who have supported me and helped me discern that calling. So I guess what I'm saying is it takes a church, it takes a family to release people for their purpose. And if I need that and if Esther and if Mordecai and all these great people in the Bible need that, then there's a fairly good chance that we all need other people. We all need other people to support us and to encourage us and even sometimes to fast for us. And if other people need that, then we need to be the church that can support people into releasing their potential, into following their purpose that God is calling them to. So our challenge is how can we be that church that supports people? How can we be that church that is willing to put aside our own comforts, willing to make space for people to be the people that God has called them to be? There's a lot of people hurting today. There's a lot of people hurting in our world because they've been led to believe that they can't be fully known, they can't be who they are, they can't ever be fully known and fully loved and fully accepted. But we know that's not right. We know that's not true. So we can do something about it. How can we be that church family for the people that are hurting around us today? So I want to finish up. Let's um let's just turn to that verse where God tells Esther and Mordecai to to go into the throne room. Let's find that one. Can you find it? Cuz uh, it must be here somewhere. 
no, no, that's right, sorry. You know the funny thing about the Book of Esther? The funny thing about the Book of Esther is there isn't a verse where God tells Esther or Mordecai what to do. In fact, God isn't mentioned in the entire book. Do you know, when I first started thinking about faith, God wasn't in my book very much either. I didn't come from a Christian family. I didn't really know much about Jesus. I hadn't really started thinking about faith and I, I didn't really feel the need for a saviour. There wasn't much God in my book. But God has never and will never be limited to working in the places where his name is mentioned. When we look at the stories that we have in the Bible, our own stories, we can see how God has been working. Spoiler alert, by the way, um, like Esther wins, you know, she, she goes to the throne room, she goes before the king and the king hears her. Mordecai is rewarded, Haman meets his downfall, the Jewish people are saved. And do you know it took coincidence after coincidence after coincidence for that to happen? I don't think it was coincidence, I think God was working. God was moving in that place, even though they were in exile, even though it wasn't God's people they were surrounded by. God was moving anyway. Even though God wasn't mentioned much in my life, I know his hand was guiding me to him. And I believe that with all my soul. And I believe that God is drawing you to him too. God wants a deeper relationship with each of us. He wants us to be the people that he has created to be. We don't always have the instructions for every day. Man, I really wish we did. I really wish we had the instructions. But sometimes we just need to be a little bit brave, like Esther. And we need to move forward together in faith. And we start to see the kingdoms that God has given us for such a time as this. Will you pray with me today? Will you pray with me today? Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you call us. Thank you that you equip us to be the people that you've created us to be. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can support others. Lord, help us to see the ways that we can make room for the people around us to fulfill their calling in your name. Help us to see the ways in which we are being called. And Lord Jesus, help us to be brave. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen.
behind us, destiny before us, every heart is bowed down. From the field of battle into great blessing, nothing left to fear now. When we don't know what to do, what to do. Running with 